Good morning, and welcome to worship here at Jubilee United Church. Andrew, can you hear me now? Perfect. Um, I'm Reverend Graham Bramler, lead minister here at Jubilee, and I'm leading worship today with assistance from Christina Burge, Lorna Gross, Andrew Burge here at the church, and all of you. We're grateful that you've taken time to join us this morning. When we gather, we typically acknowledge our relationship with the indigenous folk who have been in the area for time immemorial. And we give thanks and acknowledge that we are located on the ancestral and unceded territories of the Halkamelem and Squamish speaking peoples. Wherever you are, I hope that you can acknowledge the location and relationship that you have to. Their welcome invites us to welcome others. And so you are invited to worship however it is that you need to and to be here however you need to be here. We strive to be a place where church is for all people and sometimes we might fail, but we believe that no matter how great or little you feel your faith is, no matter if it's your first time coming to church, if you were raised here or it's your first time in a long time, no matter what it is that you think keeps you from being welcomed, we truly hope that you find a welcome with us. Regardless of your age, your skin color, your culture, your race, your marital or economic status, ability or differing ability, your sexual orientation or your gender identity. Jubilee United Church welcomes the diversity of all who come to find God and recognize that it is God who welcomes us to be part of God's family. In that welcome, we light the light of God, three in one and one in three. It is the light that dwells in each one of us. It connects as it dances like the spirit danced over the water at creation. God's imagination saw all that was good, beautiful, and loving, and continues to see us as beloved children in the divine family. The word called forth the stars in every universe and speaks to us, giving ourselves to the world. The spirit which moved over creation, breathing life into all things, fills us with peace and patience, with hope and healing to share. We come to worship and we pray. Like creation on that first morning, may we tingle with anticipation of your goodness and wonder flowing into our lives. God who shapes all things, may we join all creation in worshiping you who is as close as a heartbeat. As God whispered into the silence, you ran forth with creatures of every size and shape at your side. Word of wonder, as river filled the valleys and ran to seas, as flowers sprang forth in meadows, as grace unfathomable sprang forth, may we join all creation in emulating you, which is close as our flesh, which you wore. As God's mind overflowed with dreams, you brooded over the waters stirred the cloud with your wind, breathed life into all that is. Spirit of fanciful faith, planting the seeds of peace, may we join all creation in dancing with you, who is as close to us as every breath we take. May we join all creation in worshiping, emulating, dancing as we offer our prayers to you. God in community, holy in one, holy in three. Amen. Our children and youth gathered this morning for some time together. And as they were gathering, uh, the children read a book called Wherever You Are, My Love Will Find You, talking about different ways to celebrate wherever we are and wherever they are, just like Jesus was, we are loved. Our youth read our scripture reading uh, and talked about how we and others and the Bible people experienced God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit in our and in their lives. Uh, they talked about prayer together and they shared some spiritual practices and how we need to sometimes slow down and take time with God. So it is good that we have a chance for our children and youth still to come together and spend some time learning about the stories of our faith and being in community with each other, continuing to tell the story of who they are and who we are. As we prepare to hear the scripture this morning, we welcome you to open your hearts to hear these words from both our opening book and from the Gospel of Matthew. Thank you, Christina.
No. Hold on. We good? Yes. Can you hear me now? Okay, there we go. A reading from the beginning, the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds, and fruit trees of every kind of the earth that bear fruit with the seeds in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be, two, let there be two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moved of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in their image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, they were created. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and sub subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, 
I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree that seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food and it was so. God saw everything that was made and indeed it was very good and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all their multitude and on the seventh day God finished the work and rested on the seventh day for all the work that was done so God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. A reading from the gospel according to Matthew. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Hear what the Spirit is saying through these ancient words of Scripture. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be graced by your wisdom and your love. Today is what we call in the church Trinity Sunday. It's a day when we attempt to understand the three-in-one, one-in-three relationship of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Every year we spend this one Sunday attempting to explain a piece of church history and dogma that came out of the phrasing in Matthew, in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There are a bunch of ways to show the theory of the Trinity. For example, I've seen done and done myself an experiment where you have an ice cube and a bowl of water and a boiling kettle, steam, water in three forms, frozen, liquid, and steam. Though it's all water, they are different but the same. It's one good way of thinking about the Trinity, but it's not quite enough. And in the midst of all that we're experiencing in the world, it's tough to try to think about a concept or a theory like the Trinity when what we really need to do now is more than just speak nice words about a theory. The news this week has shown protests in many places and riots in others. The issue of racism and death of racialized people, especially in North America, continues to be raised in our consciousness. And perhaps, just perhaps, Trinity Sunday situates us well in the midst of what's happening in the world, inviting us into the life and transformative power of a God who is on the move in the here and now. We are always invited to participate in God's solidarity with neighbor, but what's happening in the world right now places it front and center. How do we show solidarity with our neighbors, especially those that we don't know? How do we, mostly middle-class Caucasian people, speak the love of God into places that have been deprived of love, to announce mercy to those who have been deprived of mercy, to insist that justice will roll down to the wet and parched soil, especially when the soil is wet with the blood of our beloveds? How do we speak of that mercy and love and grace when it is people that we resemble who have mainly been the perpetrators of hatred? of violence and of death. We often want to jump to the but I'm not racist stance to declare just how good and just and caring we ourselves are and it's true most of us are good and kind and just but the harder truth to name is that we benefit from a racist system that has afforded many of us a lot of safety. 
Discovering God is triune comes from a lived encounter with a God who shows up in, among, and always for the sake of human bodies. Unfortunately, for too long, white bodies have been prioritized, and we have come to believe that God shows up in, among, and for the sake of those with power and privilege. A friend of mine attended the Black Lives Matters rally on Friday, and one of the speakers asked the question, are you here because black lives matter, or here because black deaths matter? Because it seems like a lot of you show up when there's a black death, but aren't there when the same forces that lead to black deaths impact black lives. Our current world is a world in which black, indigenous, racialized bodies are deliberately being hunted, vilified, and infected. In order to be in solidarity with them, we begin with the intentional remembering of the dead, exploited, despised victims of, of history. Jesus said, I am with you, but at least in my reading, it doesn't mean I'm on your side or I will follow where you lead, especially when you're doing things that aren't in line with what I've asked you to do. But it calls us to be better, to do better, it's not an endorsement of our self-serving ideologies of, or assurances of personal comfort, but a simple claim that Christ is present around us, calling from among the other, the blood of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, Regis Kuczynski Paquet, Colton Bushi, and too many others are crying out to God from the ground. If our theology and our churches can't speak directly to the real lived experiences of people, even those that don't look or sound like us, then we haven't done a good enough job of becoming church. We are called to clearly amplify God's declaration of human divinity and boldly magnify the love of God, a love that is committed to being among those who live with dignity denied and love withheld. We need to find a way to demonstrate the power of love in action, not just a feel-good concept of love. We live too often in individualism, isolation, and loneliness, and division. We live too often with hearts broken and communities broken apart. We live too often trying to do relationship without recognizing that relationships are who we are. The earliest followers encountered Jesus and were in relationship with him. By doing so, they encountered God directly, and at the same time, Jesus spoke of God as both distinct from him and yet nevertheless, nevertheless one with him. They also experienced encounters with the Spirit as encounters with God directly, and at the same time, Jesus spoke of the Spirit as a guiding, challenging present distanced from both him and from the one to whom he prayed. Jesus attempted to demonstrate through the relationship that developed with those early followers that he would continue to be with them as they experienced God as intimately involved in their lives and within the created world. That one that we hear about in the very beginning of our Bible. And to know through Christ the solidarity that he expresses lived out through life, death, and new life with the oppressed and rejected members of the human family. The Gospels tell people coming to recognize God being manifest around them in their experience. They don't learn about God as much as they encounter a God who is always close. The spirit among us continues to make incarnate God's embrace of all people. The doctrine of the Trinity is about a God who is living and active in our lives at every turn creating and recreating, teaching and guiding, refining and empowering. We are called to be people on the move and mission. And rooted in the story where our journey began, our mission is between two worlds. With Jesus on the mountain, a thin place between human and divine, standing on the edge of a new world and a new time. The time of empire of debt and slavery, of the reign of death is passing away. It will continue to exercise sway only when the death and resurrection of God's Son is not only proclaimed, 
The truth about Rome's empire has been unveiled for the world to see. It has wielded its most powerful tool, death on a cross, against God's own child. One person this week compared Jesus' death on the cross to the lynching of black bodies in the southern states, making it even more real and alive right now. Jesus' death came as he proclaimed the coming of God's kingdom, but even now, Rome's control of the apparatus of death has been shown to be hollow. The empire of the heavens has not just begun, it has already won the crucial victory. I know you're probably feeling uncomfortable right now, and you're not sure why I'm doing this with you, but the church is not a place where you're supposed to feel comfortable. The church is a place where we can name the brokenness in the world and commit to changing it as we are called to change it. Encountering Jesus, the early disciples found themselves face to face with Emmanuel, God with us. Encountering the Spirit, early disciples found themselves heart to heart with God, the inspiring guide and advocate who sustains creation and makes the social movement we call the church possible. Jesus sends the disciples into the world not only to announce salvation of humans, but to bear witness to the end of a broken creation. He commissions not perfect disciples, but people who both worship and doubt as they stand at the edge of the world that is passing away and the one that is still coming to them. The new world must include the presence of the resurrected Jesus, a reconciled heaven and earth, and a place where we might actually find some true equality. The new world where we are ushered into greater awareness that we already and always exist within and among the presence and life of a world saturated with divine presence and a God in whom we live and move and have our being who continues to call us toward justice and love even in the crisis, even in the shadow of grief and violence. We already and always exist within and among the presence of the triune God. And we are being called to join our voices to those being raised, not to overtake, but to support, to become allies. If only we commit to working hard at naming our privilege and inherent racism in the systems and structures, and work to break those systems so that all might be actually loved as equals. The doctrine of the Trinity is about a God who is living and active in our lives at every turn, creating and recreating, teaching and guiding, refining and empowering. If only we might let ourselves be changed because of the love that we've received. And if only we can share that love with others, with the others that often don't hear it, don't experience it, don't feel it, and don't know it. In this time where black, indigenous people of color are suffering, may we find a way to live the love of God, the presence of Jesus, and the power of the Spirit. May it be so in your life and in mine. Amen.
Lorna, if you want to offer our prayers for us, thank you. Just trying to get you unmuted. There you go. We welcome all who have joined us in today's worship service. Let us come before God in prayer. We pray that strength and courage be given to all who work for a world of equality, reason, and understanding, that the good that lies in every person's heart may day by day be magnified, and that all will come to see more clearly not which divides us, but which unites us. Let us take a moment to remember and pray for the following people that the church office has knowledge of. Those in senior residences, June, Doreen, Ruth, Brian and Joyce, Ruth, Pearl, Peggy, Mary, Lorraine, Rain, Olga, Dorothy, Jim, Louise, 
Bill, Bruce, Bob and Virginia, Louise, Helen, and Ken. Those who live alone, especially seniors. Margaret, Ethel, Diane, Carol, Ralph, Phyllis, Irene, Joan, Howard, Claire, Fran, Mary Lou, Diane, and Marlene. For those struggling with life situations, with their own illnesses and loved ones' illnesses. Josh, Helen, Roy and Kim, Jack and Glow, Marie and family, Ron and Frederick, Sandra, Crystal, Kay and Pam, and Janet Warren. For those who grieve, Janet and the baby family at the passing of Joe. For ourselves and whatever the prayers are in our own lives. Please give us gentle wisdom that we may help our neighbors. Give us strength and courage to lend our help to those in need. Our hearts unite in praise and thanks to the people who are working to save others and helping in many ways, our doctors, nurses, firefighters, teachers, emergency personnel, caregivers, people working so that we may have food. We pray for our church. We give thanks for Reverend Graham, Andrew Burge, Arzina, Justin, and others keeping our ministry going. Please give them strength and our deepest thanks. May we now have inner peace and bring peace to others. Please let us come together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The life and work of the church continues, though differently than it did three months ago. And so I invite you to stay after worship uh, when we finish singing our final hymn and to join together in some breakout rooms where you get to interact with people that you may or may not know and have a chance to just connect and chat and be in community uh, still. We don't just do that on Sunday. We also do it on Wednesdays at noon and Thursdays at 6.30 in the evening using the same phone numbers or link that you used for worship this morning. There will be a congregational meeting on June 21st following worship. Uh, it'll be an experience and a trial. We're hoping that it'll be brief. It is just to pass the budget as presented at the meeting on March 1st, but showing all of the lines. Um, the numbers are still the same as they were when it was presented in the annual report, and we uh, just need to have that budget passed so that it's official. This coming week, we celebrate the birthdays of Phyllis and Leslie. Many of you won't know who Leslie is, but she's a friend of mine that was in my settlement charge. It's her birthday this week. And Ralph Cochran turns 101. It's great that we're able to celebrate together. Uh, if we've missed your birthday or anniversary, it's only because we don't know. And if you don't want me to tell people, you can let me know either of those things. We are really grateful for whatever gifts you're able to offer, whether they're financial or talents or time or prayer. If you're able and would like to still contribute to the financial life of Jubilee United Church, there are a variety of ways. Either drop off or mail in a check, join the pre-authorized remittance program, and we also receive e-transfers to the office email address. If you regularly worship with another congregation, we encourage you to continue to contribute there because we know that they still need your assistance and your presence as well. Regardless of whatever it is, we are glad that you've joined us in worship, and we thank you for your generosity. And we pray. 
Like the gift of creation, we are but steward of all we possess. And like the gifts of creation, they are not to be hoarded, but shared with the hungry, the lonely, the lost, the struggling. And as we offer our gifts, receive our thanks and praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, we are sent forth by God, taking all that is good to the broken places, taking all that is beautiful to those who live in despair. We are sent forth by Jesus, the word of hope, following to every place he would lead us, to every person who will bless us. We are sent forth by the Spirit, God's grace, to bring life where there is fear, to offer love where hate seems to take hold. And we are called to let our voices raise And now, may the peace of creation's imagination, the peace of grace's word, the peace of hope's spirit, and the deep, deep peace of God and community, holy in one, holy in three, be with you this day and always. Amen. We're going to sing our final hymn, and then we'll stay together for some fellowship time as 